Welcome to the Abbey, home to Roxton College of Fairleigh Dickinson University. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the college in a whole host of ways, and not least of all, of course, financially. We want to welcome future students to the Abbey and would like to welcome alumni back to visit. But to be in a position to do so, the college needs your help. Let me explain. Come with me. The college requires constant maintenance, much of which goes unseen, but which culminates in a lot of expense. You can see here some of the stonework that requires dealing with both on the building and of course the steps around the building. There are also items such as the guttering and the fire escapes. Inside, for example here in the chapel, you can see we've been a victim of the weather, the guttering outside and the rain coming through. It all needs seeing to. And of course there's the exciting things like the pipework and the boilers. They also require maintenance, they're not new. a room I'm not in very much, but the students use it a lot. We'd certainly like to redo the flooring, paint it up a bit and who knows, get some new equipment. Help! Believe it or not, it's a strange building like the Abbey. We've even had rain damage down in the basement, uh, which all needs seeing to and repair. And then through into the recreational room, or one of them, We'd very much like to completely redo this for the students. New carpets, new curtains, new furniture, new equipment. This room gets a lot of use and uh, it would be nice to maintain it. And here we have the carriage house with student study bedrooms all the way across the top. These rooms have yet to be renovated and we'd really like to do that. And the plan is to redo this completely. Put a number of bedrooms up here gable windows out of the roof space, making a real feature of all of the beams. And so, with buildings and grounds like these, there's always a lot of expenditure required. So, as you can see, there's always a lot of expenditure here at the college. Things we have to do, but also things we want to do. And with your help, we'll be able to. Please, please make a donation to the Roxton College now and forever appeal. We would all be oh so grateful. Thank you. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder where you're at. Above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Alice, uh, and, um, White Rabbit, it's time for tea. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Come join me, the White Rabbit, can't you tell, and the Mad Hatter for a special Roxton Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Come on. The British and tea. As far as the British are concerned, tea is the answer, almost whatever the question. Certainly it seems to be the solution whatever the problem. In short, tea fixes everything. Got a cold? Have a cup of tea. Broken bones? Have a cup of tea. House gets bombed? Well, have a cup of tea. For the British, tea is the elixir of life. For as four times former British Prime Minister William Ewart Gladstone observed, if you are cold, tea will warm you. If you are too heated, it will cool you. If you are depressed, it will cheer you. If you are excited, it will calm you. For many people in contemporary Britain, a cup of tea is a vital part of everyday life. 
In fact, tea is so integral to the British and to British routine that many would find it difficult to imagine life without it. But it was not always so. Tea was once a luxury product that only the rich could afford. And it is over the course of several hundred years that tea has gained its place as the British national drink. The story of this transformation is an interesting one. What? Ah, which we don't have time for now. Suffice to say that the beginning of the 20th century, there could be no doubt about the importance of tea to the British people, and during both the First and the Second World Wars, it sustained the troops and the general population. Indeed, one could say that the population <laughs> kept calm and carried on drinking tea. Tea is a beverage at the very heart of social life in Britain. For millions of people today, just as for Dr Johnson nearly 250 years ago, tea amuses the evenings, solaces the midnights and welcomes the mornings. In January 1946, the author and journalist George Orwell published an essay called A Nice Cup of Tea, in which he described tea as one of the main stays of civilization in this country. As such, to this day, tea and tea time is observed here at Roxton College. Classes stop mid-morning for tea and biscuits and mid-afternoon for tea and cakes, and yes, Coffee is also served. Indeed, it has to be remembered that one of the greatest Anglo-American differences that exists is in fact in relation to tea. The British drink it, whereas Americans tend to throw it into harbours. <laughs> Well, it's time for tea. Ah, lovely. Although making a cup of tea is easy, it's not simple. No? What type of tea? PG tips? Yorkshire tea? Tetley tea? Tetley make tea bags make tea? Tea bags? Or should it be loose leaf tea? I don't know. Should one warm the pot first? No. How hot should the water in the pot B, pay attention. How long should one leave the tea in the pot before serving it? I don't know. What order does one do? Do you put the tea in the cup and then the sugar no. and then the milk or the milk and the sugar no. and then the tea? What should one do? I don't know. These are only some of the questions involved. Quite possibly... If you're not mad beforehand, you'll be mad at the end. Now, there's a particular type of tea, which is what we call a cream tea. Now, there are four issues that immediately crop up when dealing with God's own creation scones. A scone? Firstly, what are they called? Or to be more precise, how does one pronounce S-C-O-N-E? Is it scone or scone? Scone. Scone. I might be mad, but I'm not stupid. Secondly, should they be plain or fruit? Plain. Fruit. Thirdly, what type of cream should be used? Well, frankly, that shouldn't even be a question. That shouldn't even be a question. Because we use, of course, clotted cream. Fourthly, and more importantly, does one put the jam on the scone and then the cream, or the cream on the scone and then the jam? 
Now, this question, I don't know if you realize this, but this question is as divisive as can become as heated as that portrayed by Jonathan Swift in his 1726 uh, account of Gulliver's Travels, in which he describes the intra-Lilliputian quarrel over the practice of breaking eggs, yeah. the small end or the large end or whatever. Wars can break out over where to place the cream on the scone. And this is not even getting into the debate about whether serving scones with clotted cream is a Devonshire cream tea or a Cornish cream tea. To say nothing of the idea of a Somerset cream tea, not. In fact, the only thing people from Devon and Cornwall agree on is that it's not a Somerset cream tea. People in Devon and Cornwall each claim their cream is superior. As a solution, I simply suggest trying both. Now, are you watching? Oi! You watching? Come on. I tell you what, this is outrageous. Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? <gasps> now, let us do this. We will try. Look what I'm doing. I am putting the cream on first. And then, jam. It's wrong! You do not do that! Ever! It's outrageous! Tasty, but outrageous. What you do is the appropriate thing. Joy of all joys. How did he get out of the teapot? He, uh, Are you he, interfering? No, no. It came out I mind. have a knife. I can see that. What we do, that's better. What we do is jam. I nearly made a mistake. You're riling me. We put the jam on. Ah, we put on. the jam on. Of course we do. Course we put we do. the jam. You jam can't on. have too much. Jam on. Jam on. Jam, jam on. on. Absolutely right. And then it's oodles. Oodles, Oodles of cream. Okay. Where's I, your plate? Uh, 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 here. Good. There you are. Oh. That's for you. Thank you. Now, I'm having plenty of this. This is what you call a cream tea. I have died and gone to heaven. Mm, that's very good. It is what, about, very... what about him? Let him drink the tea. There's more scones. What? Scone. Yes. Not scone. Correct. Scone. Ah. This is to die for. Now, of course, if you don't care for tea, crazy as that might sound, but if you don't care for tea, you could at least make plight conversation. Roxton College where we're in the kitchen and my name is Meryl. I'm the catering manager who look after all the wonderful students that come here to study. your hands. You're lucky if you've got a pair of cold hands because that helps. When we've kneaded all this in, creamed it all in, then we'll have the flour. We'll mix all the flour in all together. Make sure that you've got it all together. We'll tip it out and then get it to bind all together.
Then we roll it out to the thickness that you want. When you've rolled it out, you then get the cutter and a tray with some baking parchment on it so that they don't stick to the, the tin. When you've got them all done like this, you then place them in the oven on 160 and give them 10 to 15 minutes. But you may have electric, so you would have to work it out. And those are about the right size and they're lovely. And then when you've cut those out, you can push it all back together again and make more. You should get about 12 to 15 biscuits depending on your size. And here we have the finished product, the lovely Roxton shortbread biscuits. Andrew Rose, our quiz master, and of course the keeper of all knowledge as the college librarian. So tell me, Andrew, why is a raven like a writing desk? That is not the question. These are the questions. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. As Dr. Baldwin has said, sorry, the Mad Hatter, my name is Andrew and I'm the college librarian. I'm also the archivist, I teach creative writing, and I have been known to help John around the college moving furniture or indeed helping him clean the gutters. So basically I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. And today for one day only, I'm also the white rabbit. Uh, I do assure you, I don't normally dress up like this, I'm dressed like this for one reason and one reason alone, and that's to help raise funds for the college. As you saw from the video at the beginning of today's event, uh, we have been affected by the pandemic. Like so many people around the world, um, we've had no students now for almost a year. Uh, it's affected our income. Uh, as you saw from the video, a building like the Agri needs a lot of maintenance. Uh, so if you can give any money at all to the Roxton Now and Forever Fund, we would be so grateful. All money goes directly to the college, so thank you. Uh, I'm now going to see if I can get the quiz up. Hopefully it will be a very smooth transition and I'll get up straight away. So if you bear with me, I will get the quiz up. And here it is. Okay, so uh, the quiz today, we have a picture round and a general knowledge round. Uh, I just want to work out the best way of doing a quiz, bearing in mind we've got people watching uh, across the USA, people in the UK, maybe even a few other countries. So I thought I'd try and keep it simple by having two teams. Team A is everybody, wherever you are right now, watching live on Facebook or YouTube, you are all in Team A. Team B is Dr. Baldwin. I'm going, going to get Dr. Baldwin up on my other computer. There he is. Say hello, Dr. Baldwin. Hello, hello Dr. Dr. Baldwin. Excellent. Now, um, I'm going to give a question. And then once I've given the question, I'm going to give Team A, which is everybody, time to think of the answer. Uh, you can type your answer into Facebook or YouTube in the comment section and it'll come up on my other computer. So if, you, if I look away, I'm looking at the answer coming through on my other computer, and I can post it. So you can post your answers. Uh, if you aren't sure about the answer, but you put it through anyway and you get it wrong, don't worry. You can keep on putting the answers through and hopefully somebody will get it right. If you get it right, or Team A gets it right, which is anybody watching live, you get a point. If no one knows the answer, the question carries over to Dr. Baldwin, and if he gets it right, he gets a point. 
Uh, John is keeping score of um, who's going to be winning. Say hello, John. Hello there. Yeah, hopefully you can hear John as well. So he'll be keeping tabs of who's winning. Um, so with no further ado, let's launch ourselves into the quiz. Uh, so as I say there, type your answers into the comment section on Facebook or YouTube. So let's launch ourselves into the quiz. Uh, picture round. We've got three categories. We've got the room round, where we're looking at different rooms around the Abbey. But do you know where they are? Uh, now, hopefully you might know the Abbey quite well, but some of these photos are rather old. So the rooms may look quite different today. Then we've got around and far places. You've got to love a quiz with around and far places. And then lastly, we've got my favourite round, the faculty round, where we're looking at photographs of members of the faculty, but do you know who they are? Now, these photographs are very old and they look quite different. So see if you can recognise them. So here is our first question. Which room is this? If you think you know the room, um, type your comment in now and I can put it up on my other computer. So if you think you know it, could type it in right now. Um, this photograph was taken approximately 100 years ago. I haven't got a specific date for it. The pictures along the top of the wall, they've all gone, though I believe the wallpaper is still there. Um, we still have a plant in this room, although the plant is a different, who knows, it might be the same plant, but it's a different looking plant in different part of the room. Now the answers are coming in, so I'm going to put some of them up. Here we go. Uh, it is indeed the library. However, I'm going to be very pedantic. We've got various libraries in uh, the college. I want to know which library it is. So I've got a few others coming in. Um, reading room, well, that's on the library, so that's not the right one. Do we know which library it is? If we've got uh, the Pope Library, the Guildford, the North Library. If you get it right, you get a point. If not, it will carry over to Dr. Baldwin. Now, a lot of people ask their library. A few are saying reading room. Um, Oh, oh, Dr. Borden, it? Yeah, not yet, Dr. Borden. Quite a few people are saying the Pope Library. I'm afraid it isn't the Pope Library. Aha, here we are. Natalie Phillips has got it. It is the Guildford Library, correct. So I'm afraid, Dr. Borden, you don't get the question. You don't get the answer to that one. So a point to team A, which is everybody. And here is how the library looks today. You can even see me in the corner of the mirror if you look carefully taking the photograph. Okay, so we have one more room question before we move into the fireplace round. Let's take a look. Here we have another photograph. Uh, again, it's about 100 years old, but do we know which room this is? Uh, this room, I would say, looks very different today. Um, it's got pictures on the wall. Uh, they've all gone. We've got um, the door still there. Now, there's a chair in front of the door in this photograph, which I think is a pretty stupid place for a chair, if you ask me. Uh, thankfully, there isn't a chair there now. The door is still there. The fireplace is still there. That might help you out. At one time, it was the garden parlour. It is no longer the garden parlour. And we've got an answer, and we've got the correct answer. So let's put the answer up. It is indeed the North Library. So I'm afraid, Dr. Baldwin, you haven't got a point yet. Oh, dear. I'm pointless. You are pointless. <laughs> okay, uh, there it is, the North Library. So let's now move on to the, oh, I'll, I'll go back there. We can see the way it is today. Uh, back, back, back. There's how the North Library looks today, looking quite different. We've still got the door there, minus the chair, uh, and the fireplace, of course, and other than that, the room looks fairly different. Okay, we're now into the fireplace round. I'm going to show you several uh, photographs or fireplaces around the Abbey and all you've got to do is say which room it is. So do you recognise this room? We have a gong in the fireplace. Maybe you used to dong that gong. Uh, which room could this be? If you know, put it in now. Otherwise, Dr. Gordon might get his first point. And I know he wants to get a point, don't you, Dr. Gordon? I want a point. You want a point? I want more than one. Well, we've got a couple coming in. We've got uh, Sam Brandt. Hello, Sam. Sam says it's a carriage house. Indeed, it is. But we want to be a bit more specific than that. 
And so we're going to get another one up if we can. Someone else got it right? We have. Uh, here we are, here we are. It is the buttery. I want to go. Tough. <laughs> oh, you can't go yet. So here we go. That is indeed the buttery. Now then, uh, our next question. And there's a buttery at least today. Minus us, even though we're sitting here. The buttery. Okay, here is uh, a very ornate looking fireplace. Uh, very intricate design. If you look at the fireplace itself, you can see an N. That's N for North, for the North family that lived here. Um, I'll give you a clue, although maybe you don't need one. This is a very bright room. I bet you know that Dr. Morgan. I know, I know it, I know it. Give me a chance. Well, let's see if anyone else has got the answer right. If they've got it, they're going ahead first. It is, let's see, if anyone's got the answer, let's take a look. Aha! Here we are. I'm afraid, Dr. Baldwin, you've not yet got a point, as is indeed the Regency Room. And here it is today, with the Prince Regent over the mantelpiece. Excellent. How are the scores doing, John? Well, at the moment, it's Dr. Baldwin, nil points. <laughs> the rest of the world, four. Three, okay. We have one more question in the fireplace round. Uh, before I move on to the next round, my favourite round. But let's take a look at the fireplace. Now here we have a lion guard in the fireplace. We've got some logs in the fireplace. I assure you they're there for ornamental use only. But do you recognise this fireplace? I spent a lot of uh, time near this fireplace when I'm at the college. Um, but do you recognise which room this is? Now, you might get a point here, Dr. Baldwin. Ooh, ooh, you ooh, might ooh, get a point. Ooh. We have an answer. Is it correct? I'm afraid it's not Billy. It's not the great all. But which room could this be? Does anybody know? Otherwise, Dr. Baldwin will get his first point. And I know he wants it. We've got another one coming in. Uh, nope, not the great all. Uh, here we go. Ah. Hang on. Look at Someone else? AJ, okay. The library. It is the library. Again, I'm being pedantic. We've got several libraries. Which library is it? You can't even go at half points. You've got a name the library. Is uh, it my go? It is, I'm afraid. Hello, excuse I me. I want to pontificate about it. Well, it is the Guildford Library. Uh, well done, Sydney. Um, and here is the Guildford Library, as you can see. Now, um, you can see there's a bust on the mantelpiece there. Now, I spend a lot of time working in this room. Now, I often look up from my desk. There it is, Guildford Library. I look up from my desk and I see that bust looking at me. And I, I can go back to my work, I look up again, and it's staring at me. Constantly staring at me. It's very off-putting. I mean, every time I'm trying to do anything, its eyes lock onto me. And it gives me a shiver down my back. Look at it, look at it, it's quite off-putting, isn't it? Thankfully, we're now going to go into my favourite round that we can leave the story noise behind as we go into the faculty round. Now, we're going to be showing you various photographs of members of the faculty, but do you know who they are? Now, I personally don't think this person looks all that different. Still got the same face shape, still got the same kind of quirky look, um, but do you recognise who it is? Now, I've got a few other photographs of this person, which I'm going to put up as well and see if they help at all. Here we go. Here is the same person again, several years later. And in case you're wondering, no, it is not Dr. Garrity. Who could this be? I think they look like some kind of Hollywood star. But do you recognise it? Uh, we've got a few answers, including that. Do you well, recognise it? Sorry. It? it? <laughs> Oh dear, sorry, uh, person in the photo. Um, do you recognise who it is? Now, I've got loads of photos all coming in, and they're all correct, but uh, I'm going to give you another photograph, first of all. Now, this is the same person with her husband. Uh, I don't think he looks any different at all. Uh, so this photo was again taken several years ago. Um, well, more than several years ago, I think. But do you know who it is? Uh, we've got loads of photos coming in. I'm going to put them up now. It is, of course, Let's put some of them up. Uh, one moment. Yeah, it is indeed. It's Wendy.
uh, for the Oxford uh, Quality People would say is Wendy. It is indeed a lovely professor of art, Wendy Hart. And there she is, and her equally lo lovely husband, Chris. Uh, the photograph of Chris was taken several years ago uh, at the uh, Roxton Village Fate, which is a big fair. Uh, now, Chris and their dog Charlie entered the competition, and uh, the owner that most looks like their dog. And I'm glad to say they won first prize. Now, if you aren't sure who's who, Chris is the one at the top with the glasses, and below we have Charlie, the dog. Uh, our next photograph is a member of staff when they have got a wee small baby. So who could it possibly be? Uh, this might be quite a tricky one, but let's take a look anyway. Do we know who that is? Member staff, when they're still in uh, nappies or diapers, as you would say, who might it be? I've got a couple of other photographs we can look at as well, as you can do, I'm sure, possibly take them on the same day. Who might that be? Got a kind of little strange look in her face, I think. Um, do you know who that is, Dr. Gordon? I'd mean, oh, just like to point out, Andrew, that I believe you're on very thin ice. Yeah. This is my revenge for making me dress up like a white rabbit. Mm. But, uh, I can take revenge too. <laughs> you're okay. Uh, anyway, I'm not fully going to not tell you who this is. Um, hello, people. Okay, here we go. It is, okay, it is indeed a bouncing baby Borgen. A Dr. Borgen baby process. Now, uh, moving swiftly on, on to our next question. Uh, here we are, uh, back on uh, solid ground. Here is a member of the faculty, someone who's very flexible holding her toes. Uh, I don't know if she still can do this or not. I know that she does do yoga, so maybe she can. But who is it? Again, I don't think they look all that different. Same face shape, um, same look in the same kind of face, really. Who could, it, who could this be? This person has been in the college for about 10 years, I reckon. Uh, who might it be? Do we know? If not, I think that Dr. Gordon might get his first point. Uh, I'm afraid you're not going to get a point, Dr. Gordon. Oh, yeah, was a laugh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All people come in, all, all quite right. Putting them all up. It is, of course, Linda. Linda Lee Davis, who teaches core and also international business. Okay, uh, next question. Here is a member of the faculty taken quite a while ago. Um, who could it be? looking very pleased with herself, holding an envelope or something like that, looking very happy, I don't know why. Uh, hair and pigtails, that's not really much of a clue, but who could it be? Now this person has been here uh, for a good number of years, but who might it be? I think you might get a point here, Dr. Borden. Ooh. You might get your first point. Ooh, ooh. I'm excited. Uh, I'm afraid you're not going to get a point. I'm Less excited. <laughs> Sorry. No point to Dr. Warren yet. He could still crawl his way back into this. Because, yes, it is indeed uh, Dr. Morris, Dr. Angela Morris, and here she is today. Uh, Dr. Morris teaches history, sociology, uh, women, and race. Okay, next question. Uh, here we have a young boy, or it could be a young girl. Uh, who might that be? Uh, with uh, brown hair and red eyes in this photograph. I've got a couple more photographs. Here he is again with Wellington boots, or wedding boots, I think you call them gum boots or ring boots. Um, who might that be? And one more photograph, maybe taken a year or so later. Who is that little chap? I think this might be Dr. Warren, you're going to get your point. Oh, oh. You're going to get your, ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh. We've got, I'm afraid, it's not the right rabbit, it's the right rabbit. Oh, it is apparently not the right rabbit. No, it isn't. It is, in fact, where's it gone? It is, in fact, me. It is me, yes. It's me, Andrew. Uh, okay, we're now halfway through the quiz. Let's see how we're doing. Uh, John, what are the scores? Right, the rest of the world, 10. Dr. Baldwin, nil. Oh, there it is, Dr. Baldwin. <laughs> Yes, well I'm, I'm, I, I should point out that I can bear a grudge. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, before we carry on, I'll oh, quickly yeah. say, um, I know my friends John and Faith are watching tonight today with their children, Simeon and Phoebe. It's Phoebe's first birthday today. So many happy returns, Phoebe. Uh, congratulations on turning one, and I hope you've had a good day. 
Okay, now here we go. We've now got questions on Roxton and some general general knowledge. Not uh, about generals, but general knowledge. Okay. First question. How many Prime Ministers have there been in the UK while well, Dr. Baldwin has been Dean at the college? Uh, give us the number. Maybe you know the answer. You can take a guess. But uh, come up with a number and see if we can get it right. If not, Dr. Baldwin, you're going to get your first point. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now we've got one. I'm excited, Andrew. You're excited, I'm are excited. you? excited. Good. This Good. is me excited. He's excited, everybody. Uh, now we've got an answer. It's five. I'm afraid that is not the right answer. We've got, ah, oh dear, Dr. Baldwin. We've got a few more coming in, including, I think, the right one. If I get up. Uh, here we are. Seven. Yes, it is indeed seven. So we've had seven uh, Prime Ministers during Dr. Baldwin's time. Well, anyone can guess a number. I think they should name them. Ah, well, funny you to say that because now I'm going to put them up. People can name them if they want to, and I'll put them up. Otherwise, I'm going to show them on the screen. Uh -huh. First off, we had Margaret Thatcher, 1979 to 1990. Uh, and Dr. Gordon, of course, started in 1984. That's correct, isn't it, Dr. Gordon? Uh, indeed, yes. Next, we had John Major. Uh, then it was Tony Blair. Then we had Gordon Brown. Uh, they're in red because they're Labour. The other uh, leaders were Conservative. Then David Cameron. Then Theresa May, and then last but not least, or maybe at least depending on who you speak to, it's Boris Johnson up until the present. Okay, next question. Now here's one which hopefully people will get. Uh, which US president stayed at Roxton? Who might it be? I believe he stayed here more than once. Uh, he stayed here on his honeymoon in 1887. I think he was your 26th president. Who is it? If you know, give us the answer now. I've got a photograph I'll put up. Ah, we've got the answer. I'm going to put up the picture. Here it is. And the answer is also here. Uh, let's put him up. Mm. One moment. There it is. It is indeed uh, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt. He came to the Abbey multiple times and uh, he was a friend of the North family who lived here at the Abbey. There he is, Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, now we're going to move on to our next question. Uh, a library question, so in my element here. How many books do we have in the library? Now I know this is quite tricky, so I'm going to make it multiple choice. Is it either A, 910, so <laughs> a little from Dr. Morden, B, 4,500, C, 16,587, or is it D, 29,321? So put in A, B, C, or D now, uh, and we can see if anyone gets it right. I, of course, have been around the library counting every book to work uh, this out for the question. Do you, a bit out of interest, Dr. Gordon, do you know the answer? I think I do. You think you do? I think I do. You think you know the answer? I'm waiting for my point. <laughs> well, let's find out if you get it right. Tell you what, I'm going to see what people come up with and uh, maybe if someone gets a wrong one, I'll pass over to you ooh, ooh. and then you can get a point. Excellent. So let's take a look, I might be generous. I'm gonna scroll down the list and see what we've got. Wow, uh, can you believe, would you believe I've got loads of answers and every single one is correct. <laughs> Nobody's given me a wrong answer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna put up there. It is of course C, yeah, there it is, C, C, well, I would like to point yeah. out a slight quandary with the question, oh, because in point of fact, one could say that A, B, and C are correct. You could say that. And that's what I'm yes, saying, yes. because you don't say, what's the total number of books? How many books do we have in the library? We do have 910, we do have 4,500, and we do have 16,587. <laughs> so I believe a one point should be deducted oh. from the rest of the world, and I should get three points. Okay, I've got a positive John here. This is the one with the pen and paper. John, what do you think? I've already marked it down for the rest of the world, so it'll have to stand. Oh, there you go. Sorry, you have a mark. I shall bear that in mind, Jonathan. Okay. Ah, now here we go. Uh, we have 10 countries in the world uh, which have four letter names. What are they? So down to the trophy round. This is a great question. Uh, I've given you a clue, I've given you the first letter. 
So you've got to think of three more letters to accompany uh, the country. Uh, they are spread all over the world. We've got them in Africa, we've got them in Europe, we've got them in South America. Do you know what they are? Now, th this uh, question is worth 10 points. So I reckon, Dr. Gordon, you might clear up here. You might finally get on the board. If you know any of the answers, type them in now. If not, Dr. Baldwin might get his first answer. Let's see what people are coming up with. I'm going to scroll down. Are oh, they thinking about it, Dr. Baldwin? They're all thinking about it. Uh, I've got so many answers coming in here, but scroll down, it's taking me a while. Uh, aha. Okay, we've got a few coming in. Yes, Pete is indeed Peru, so you can't get that one, Dr. Baldwin. Here we also have Iraq, that's correct, Jen. So you can't get that one, Dr. Baldwin. Uh, Cuba, yeah, we've got, yeah, hang on, where's Cuba gone? Yep. Yeah. One moment. There it is, Cuba, Nicole, that's correct. So you could still get seven, Dr. Baldwin, ooh, ooh. maybe. Let's see how other people are doing. Oh, wow, okay. Laos, so you can add this, John. Yes. Okay, we've got that one as well. Uh, Chad, the answers are coming in thick and fast. Uh, Iran, have we had that yet? No, Iran. Okay. What else have we got? Yeah, Fiji, that's another one. Uh, and another one coming up. Togo, correct. How many have we got left, John? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm not sure. I think a couple. I think it's more than that, isn't it? No, I think it's just M and Q. No, we haven't got M yet. M, there it is. Q. We've got oh, no. M. Yeah, we've got a Q. Oh, John. Q. <laughs> what are you doing, John? Got <laughs> okay. Okay, right. I think we're going to see what else we've got. There's O. We've no. got O. So how many have we waiting for, John? Uh, just... Uh... Oh, yes, yeah, everything. I think it is. That is everything. I think, I think it is. It's a clean sweep. Yes. No uh, question yet. No answer yet for Dr. Gordon. I'm sorry, Dr. Gordon. Well, I would like to point out that I got all of them, but there you are. I won't bear a grudge too much for long. Okay, and here we go. Shout to Cuba, Fiji, Iran, Iraq, Laos, Mali, Oman, Peru, and Togo. Hooray! Right, now we are coming towards the end of the quiz. Hoo, hoo, hoo. But first of all, we've got the odd one out round. John, shush. Okay, which, here, which one here is the odd one out? Is it former president of the USA, Lyndon B. Johnson? Is it um, a founder of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover? Is it former first lady, Laura Bush? Or could it be crime fighter, Batgirl? Which one of these is the odd one out? If you think you know the answer, now is the time to uh, give it. If not, Dr. Borden will finally, finally get a point. You think you might get a point, Dr. Uh, I Borden? think I might. You think you might? I think, well, uh, actually, with you as judge, probably not. Oh. And John as scorekeeper, probably not. I'm not going to get any points whatsoever. Oh, you, 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 you might get one. You might get one. Let's take a look. <coughs> Let's take a look and see what's coming in. I've got every confidence you're going to get a point, Dr. Borden. Oh, oh. Uh, a few answers are coming in, and they are not right. So you might get it. You might get. Now I'm going to put a couple up. Which uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, no, it is not back. I'm afraid. No, back go is not the odd one out. What else have we got? Uh, no, it isn't Jed Hoover. So it's down to two. Down to two. Fifty-fifty. <laughs> let's wait till we get the right <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Uh, I think right answer did come in, in fact. Let's take a look. I'm sure I saw the right answer. And I did. Here it is. It is, of course, Lyndon B. Johnson. Why, though? Are they saying going to tell you why? Oh, well, I don't know. Does anybody know why? If somebody knows the reason why, I will um, give, I'll give you the point. If not, Dr. Baldwin might get the point if he knows it. Uh, we have got an answer coming in here. Right. Uh, it is coming up here saying that Laura Bush was a librarian. Ah. Indeed, that is correct. Thank you, Linda. Uh, now then, it's because, if I'm moving on, 
all of them were librarians or worked in libraries, I ought to say, apart from Linda Mead Johnson. He did not work in a library. He, in fact, did a bit of work, I believe, uh, teaching. And so there we are. Sorry about that, Dr. Morley, no point for you yet. <laughs> we are now on to the final round, and I'm going to guarantee, guarantee, you're going to get a point in this one. Mm. I guarantee. Mm. I'm going to be sympathetic and let you get a point. Ah. And then you want my sympathy, so there we are. Yeah. Mm. Okay, film sequels. Here we are. Uh, we're looking at film series. Uh, so there have been multiple films in the, in the series. Uh, first of all, we've got my fourth film, was called Citizens on Patrol. Which film series could that be? There were uh, lot, lots of them. I believe they all came out in the 1980s. I might be wrong there. Uh, next, we have my fourth film, Introduce Fork in the Spork. I haven't seen this film, but I do like the film series. Uh, next, my fourth film was my most successful and starred Dolph Lundgren. Now, I love this film series, and I've seen the third one about three or four times, but I've never seen the fourth one. And last, uh, lastly, my fourth film was actually my first, and my first was actually my fourth. Right. What could that be? Let's see if people know the answers. If not, Dr. Warden will get one right. Let's see what we've got. Oh, wow. We've got a clean sweep but uh, uh, from John Scott. But before I... I, I thought you were going to guarantee that I was going to get a point. Yeah, I'm going to give you a sympathy Your point. word means nothing, White oh, Rabbit. I'm going to give a sympathy point. How many points Dr. Borden got, actually? Are you going to give him uh, a point? Uh, uh, nil points. Really? I'll give him a point. Now then, um, it's all to the right. Let's see if it's people got them right. Yeah, uh, correct on it. It is Police Academy for the first one. Uh, Police Academy, there it is. Police Academy. Uh, next one was, of course, uh, Toy Story, Toy Story films. Next, do we have, has anybody got this? Well, we've got, uh, let's see, if anyone knows the third one. Ah, somebody does, it is. It is, of course, the Rocky films, yes. Rocky. So there's Toy Story, there's Rocky. And lastly, has anyone got the last one? Let's take a look, see if anyone's got the last one. Well, if Frank Manzo is watching, he should know this. It is, of course, Star Wars. So well done, everybody, who got those ones right. Uh, let's see if there's a clean with John Gordon. He had a clean sweep, or the one I could find, so I'll put that up. Uh, well, Danny's also got it. There we are, those are four. So those are the answers. Now, that is the end of the quiz, I'm afraid. Yay! Yeah, thank, you. thank you, John. <laughs> now then, John, who was the final scores? I think Dr. Borden got his one point, didn't he? Uh, I think uh, not. Uh, West of the World, ooh, uh, 28. Wow. Dr. Baldwin, yeah. Nil? Oh dear, Dr. Borden, I'm sorry about that. Well, what can one do? <laughs> Oh, good. But, uh, the good news is we've now come to the main event. Uh, maybe the main event, anyhow. It's QA time with Dr. Baldwin. So, if you've got any burning questions for Dr. Baldwin, it might be what has he been up to in recent weeks? It might be. I think the first, the first question to ask is now that there's a vacancy for a college librarian, <laughs> would anyone like to apply? No, please don't. <laughs> um, it could be you know, if you're using Brexit, if you don't really know, or um, your favourite spice bowl, anything at all. Now is the time to ask the questions and I'll put them up and Dr. Warden can answer them. The answer to the latter is Old Spice. Old Spice, yes. Uh, although I've got a question of where, quite honestly. Ooh. I'm still dressed up as a uh, white rabbit, mm. whereas you're not dressed up as a mad hatter. What's all that about? Uh, I'm not a mad hatter. Am I a white rabbit? Yeah, proof it, proof we need it. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we've got some questions coming in for Dr. Warden. And uh, we can then Ah, we have got one. Can you see that, Dr. Baldwin? No. How has Manchester United done? How have they been playing recently? Well, at the moment, they are top of the league. So I am a happy camper, even if I get no points from someone who supports West Bromwich Albion. Oh. Being John, of course. John is a West Brom fan, and I believe they're languishing in the relegation zone. I wasn't going to point that out, but you're right. Well, I am. So there we are. But Manchester United are, in fact, top of the Premiership at the moment. 
At the moment, we have to say because Liverpool might as well come back here. Well, the closest behind is actually Manchester City, who do have a game in hand, and were they to win that, they would be top by one point. But of course, in Manchester City, they're not going to do that. Sorry, Mandy, if you're watching. Okay, next question. It's from Katie. Uh, who is a Mad Hatter's hairstylist? I take that as someone who's being very rude. <laughs> well, that's all being very polite, I think. I don't know that the uh, Mad Hatter has any hair, so there you are. As I say, I'm taking that as a very rude question. Oh, Professor T's got lots of hair, hasn't oh, he? Professor T has lots of hair, yes. He's showing off, in fact, he's got so much hair. Right, well, okay, let's, let's do another one. Um, let's, let's see if we can get some more ones coming up. Ah. Oops, I lost that one. Here we go. Uh, we've got oh, so many questions coming in. Oh, We're well, far away. Oh, well, hang on. One from Howard. Hello, Howard. Question. Hello, Howard. See if I can get it up. Uh, here we are. Uh, scone recipe. Oh, scone recipe, please. Oh, good heavens above. Uh, it's going to be in the Roxton College cookbook that is soon to be published. So uh, I'm not going to give you the recipe for scones now. You can get the cookbook, all proceeds to the Roxton College Now and Forever Fund. But the recipes of that and so much, so much more. Lots of yummy things in that. Excellent. Okay, let's get up another question. Uh, oh. Here's a, not a question, it's a comment. He may not be a hatter, but he's mad for sure. I mean, he couldn't agree more. So, uh, I'd like to know who said that. I'm making notes. I better not mention that. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see if we can come up with another one. Uh, right, here is a question. How is the property holding up and, um, and any reference to the trees as well? How is the, how is the property holding up, uh, trees, etc. is a question. If you can mention... Well, if you had watched at the very beginning, uh, you'd see some of what we're currently having to do because of uh, weather damage in the chapel and, uh, for example, in the basement. As for the trees, the grounds are closed at the moment, unfortunately, to the general public because, because we have yes, some uh, 30, 30 trees, trees in need of, of uh, either, either partial, partial or complete uh, removal. removal. And uh, as we haven't had an income for pretty well a year, um, we're not able to get the work done just yet. Uh, one reason why the Roxton College now and Forever Fund is so important uh, all uh, donations will be divided in two, half, of course, for now, not least of all things on the building and so on, but also the half that is the forever is uh, assistance to enable students to attend the college in the future. So all contributions will be very, very welcome and put to very good use uh, as, uh, as we explain. Many thanks. Great. Okay, next question uh, from Sam. How are your online classes going? Uh, have they actually started? <laughs> no, they haven't started yet, so I believe they're starting next week. Yes, so uh, I hope they will go well. We have several of the faculty uh, teaching, not least of all the White Rabbit. I mean, um, Andrew, uh, who will be uh, uh, participating in, in that. So hopefully they will go well. Uh, indeed, I hope they do. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm teaching a core class. We've also got history, we've got women and race, there's global issues and art. Have I missed anything else? No, I think that's it. So quite a good collection there. Um, okay, a question here from AJ. How are you staying sane? I don't think he's staying sane. He's a mad hatter. <laughs> proof it, proof we need it. Um, yes, sanity and, and, and I can be strange bedfellows, AJ, AJ, but then I'm sure you can relate to that. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, let's see, what are you most looking forward to when the students return? Having students here, that's the thing. It's a very lonely place without them. I agree. So I kind of just got drunk from company, haven't you? That's what I say. I'm looking forward to the students returning. Okay, what else have we got? Um, let's see if I can find some more. Yeah, I did see one moment ago. One moment. Okay, uh, can you recommend us a book or a TV show? What do you recommend? Anything you're watching or read at the moment? Well, I, I've recently watched a very interesting um, uh, Danish uh, detective uh, eight-part series called DNA, DNA, which I found fascinating. fascinating. 
Uh, I've also been very taken with the Norwegian uh, series, uh, four series so far, called The Bridge, which I found fascinating. And I simply adore the Italian uh, detective series Montalbano. Uh, and they've also brought out a young Montalbano. Uh, so any of those, uh, providing you don't uh, object to subtitles, or of course, if you speak Italian, Danish, or Norwegian, you won't have a problem. But I would recommend any and indeed all of those. Okay. Um, is there a discussion yet on approximate reopening dates for the alumni? Uh, opening dates for the college? Well, I imagine, you mean? I uh, so. Well, it's dependent upon the COVID situation both in this country and the United States. And uh, of course, the good news on that front is the virus is here, uh, around, being distributed, and the more the merrier on the take up for that. That is where the future uh, ability of the college resides. So we are hoping, hoping that we will be up and running from the latter part of May. And if that is not possible, then certainly for a fall semester. Fingers crossed. And indeed, any other parts of the anatomy that are crossable. OK. Um, is Pip the cat still hanging out on the grounds? Uh, as far as I know, yes. I haven't seen her today, but I think I saw her last Friday. Uh, so, uh, yes, still uh, still out and about, and no doubt missing the students. Indeed. Uh, next question. Will you visit the USA when things settle down? Will I visit the USA? Will you? Will you visit I certainly America? will. Um, I have a ticket pending because I bought it for last March and was not able to use it. And uh, I will be using it as soon as it's allowed. So, uh, sorry, but I shall be coming your way. Right, okay, let's find a few more. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know if you haven't heard of me, maybe next year. Have you got any planned hikes for 2021? Uh, I will. Uh, again, COVID situation permitting, I plan on going climbing in the uh, French Alps and the Dolomite Mountains again, hopefully in August, if, as I say, travel <laughs> permits. But that would be the plan. I have, uh, I think, nine different peaks mapped out. Okay, and this one might go for quite a while. Um, call your comments on the current state of government affairs. I don't know if that's uh, us in UK or USA, but... Um, I, I think it might be a good idea if I don't go down that road. Possibly. I think it would be interesting, shall we say, to see the departure of President Trump and the inauguration of President Biden. And I'm following with interest the developments in this country uh, as far as the fallout in more ways than one from Brexit. But as I don't want people to start turning off in droves, I won't go any further on either of those just yet. Okay, probably a good thing. Uh, the question for me now, uh, how is my baby? My baby's doing very well, thank you. Uh, he's nearly 11 months old now. Uh, time's gone very quickly. He's trying to learn to walk. Um, he can't crawl, he thinks that he should try to crawl, so I'm holding him and he's walking around. Uh, so he's doing very well, thank you. He's a very happy chap most of the time, uh, which is good, and he's sleeping very well, so I'm all happy with that. So uh, he's very well, thank you. Um, let's see if I can get up another question. A lot of people are asking about the uh, scones and your biscuit recipe. Oh, here we go, he's a bit of a different one. Uh, do we still have a Cadbury vending machine in the basement? Well, we still have a vending machine, uh, and Cadbury is one of the things that are uh, on offer or available through it, but it's not a specific Cadbury vending machine. Okay, yep. Okay, next one. Uh, have you watched The Crown? It's on Netflix. I have, well, it's also available on DVD. Okay. So I've seen series one and two of the crown. I have yet to see series three, and by all accounts, I probably won't bother with series how, four. How accurate do you think it is? That's probably you can deduce from what I've said. I think it's become less and less accurate as the series has progressed. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to watch it. Um, I can rent you the DVDs, Andrew. Oh. <laughs> What else have you got? I can cut you a deal, it's all right. Yeah, you do. Yeah, all proceeds to my holiday. The um, Now and Forever Fund. Yeah. 
Um, any other just take a look thing we've got. Uh, uh, I think we've come about. It is now um, gone one. It's now gone one o'clock. So I think we better think about signing off. But uh, I'll give you one or more two quick ones. Uh, oh, here's one. What is the day today for each of you without the students? Well, it's actually been extraordinarily busy as far as I'm concerned because uh, I'm still working uh, here at the uh, the college and uh, the now and forever uh, fund arrangements have taken up quite a bit of time but also uh, all sorts of other things associated with the building and the estate uh, as things are. So uh, I'm surprisingly busy. In fact, the days are not long enough for all that's involved. I'm sometimes wondering how we manage to fit in students and teaching uh, beforehand, but uh, keeping busy, which is keeping me off the streets, if nothing else. Yes. Yeah, I'm also keeping very busy. Uh, I'm working from home, but uh, most of the time, but uh, I've also, of course, got a baby to look after and he's keeping me very busy. Um, so I like my evenings and I can relax a bit uh, before the morning starts all over again. But uh, we're, you know, doing well and keeping very busy. But unfortunately, um, I think we're going to wrap things up as we've now gone past uh, one o'clock. Um, so thank you very much for taking part in today's event. We've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed Dr. Borman? I have enjoyed it, apart from the quiz. Apart from the quiz. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Well, <laughs> oh, and very, very briefly, if you want to do the to say hello, if somebody else did a good wave. Oh, oh, yes, okay. Well, let's move through this, John. Hi, is that me? Yes, I am good. actually here. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Hopefully good. see uh, see people again soon. Good, Robbie. Now, okay, uh, thank you for taking part. So we will now uh, have to a bit you adieu, I'm afraid. We've got the closing videos. Yeah, we've got the closing videos for you, so we're gonna do that now. Uh, one moment. And we will say thank you for joining us today. There is a place like no place on earth, a land full of wonder and mystery. And this is it, Roxton College. So if you can help with the appeal, all of us associated with the college would be eternally grateful. Indeed, when we reach our goal, when that day comes, I shall fatawaken and do so vigorously. Oh yes, and remember, when you come to the end, stop, <laughs> see. So thanks to everyone for joining us today. If nothing else, we hope that you will now drink tea rather than throw it into the nearest harbour. Also, of course, don't forget to make a donation to the Roxton College Now and Forever Fund. Every contribution, small or large, every cent or dollar or penny or pound, yen, ruble, you name it, we'll accept it. Whatever will help. So again, our thanks, and until the next time, cheerio and socially distanced, Goodbye everyone, thanks for joining us, until next time, cheerio.